Okay, cool. Just wanted to double check. I wasn't going to be boring you guys to death if I played it again. <laughs> I'm going to blend. Well, you guys may have all already, have you guys all introduced yourselves to each other? Do you know who's on the call? No. Oh, man. Okay. Well, maybe we better do a few introductions here just to hear a little bit about what you guys might be interested in getting out of this because We've got a, a small group here and I love small groups because that means we can actually spend some time customizing it a little bit to exactly what you guys want to uh, get out of this. So um, maybe just in the chat, if you could give me just a real quick, what are you hoping to get out of this session about being weather ready before hitting the road? And we'll try to make sure we hit those topics. Give you guys a few minutes to do that. So while you are doing that, go ahead and, and introduce myself and Tommy. I am Amy Hagerman. I'm here at OSU Stillwater in the Ag Econ Department. And I help uh, with some of these other folks as a big group. We do disaster preparedness work. We're trying to make sure that we have good information out there to help people be prepared for when unexpected things happen. Uh, and they can anywhere and everywhere at any time. Uh, so we're really excited you guys are joining us here. Tommy, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Tommy Puffenbarger. I'm the Ag and 4-H agent in uh, Alfalfa County. And I'm also the county director, so I've been here a long time. All right, so for those who just joined, just as kind of an intro thing, we're putting just a sentence in the chat saying what we're hoping to get out of this session, just based on the description. Is there something that caught your interest, something you're hoping to learn a little bit more about? Hi, I'm Amy Hager. That started much more quickly than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so we'll just catch me on that awkward face that you have while you're waiting on the video to start. That's my awkward face. All right, well, we're, while you're typing those things in the chat, we're going to go ahead and start this video as an introduction to the session. On the state extension. I bet you spend a lot of time on the road this time of year with your family, maybe going on vacation or going to 4-H events. Maybe you're just going to the lake or working on your farm or ranch. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself what you can do if something unexpected happens? Maybe your vehicle breaks down or severe weather happens on the road. Maybe somebody has a minor injury. The best time to prepare is before the unexpected happens. Today, we're going to talk to three educators about what you can do to get ready before hitting the road. My name is Tommy Puffenbarger. I'm the Extension Educator in Alfalfa County, Oklahoma. And I want to talk to you about basic first aid today. And first aid while you're on the road can be as simple as a, a blister while you're walking or a, or a small cut while you're fishing at the lake. However, it can also be uh, something a little worse as maybe a twisted ankle or a broken finger while you're working on the farm or at a recreational activity. So you can buy uh, first aid kits for your vehicle from the American Red Cross, or you can get them from our pharmacy, or you can make a first aid kit. So a lot of us have everything we need for that first aid kit right in our own home. The first thing we really need to think about is a container. If we want to build it, what kind of a container do we need? Something that we prefer would be watertight, 
something that has a lid that can close. And we want to make sure that we mark that first day. That way, if someone needs to get in our vehicle to find it, they already know which uh, box they're looking for. What do we put in that first aid kit? Well, we need a box of Band-Aids of various sizes, shapes, and assortment would be a great idea. Gauze rolls of different uh, widths or lengths. Gauze pads. Sterile gauze pads of different sizes and shapes will be good to have in your basic first aid kit. We need some waterproof adhesive tape to help keep things on. Some type of fiber bandage, or we call vet wrap, will help hold things in place. We'd like to see everybody have at least two pair of nitrile gloves, preferably in a package that's sterile. Alcohol prep pads, clean up things before we uh, treat them. Some type of antiseptic towelettes will be good to have in your first aid kit. A pair of tweezers and a small pair of scissors, very beneficial. And a cool pack or two is always good to have in your, your pack, your first aid kit. Now, if we're outside, whether we're doing that sporting event, fishing or whatever, we're outside, we might want to think about sunscreen. We need to think about your, your SPF that you need. Everybody has a different uh, liking to what they like. So sunscreen is very valuable. We need some antibiotic ointment of some type. Just in case we you know, get that burn or something, we need some type of burn spray or a burn cream. We also, in case we would get bitten by something, we might need a sting and bite pad or some type of anti-itch cream. And of course, we need our hand sanitizer. One thing I wanna caution you about is if you're using a hand sanitizer and you're cooking with an open fire, whether you're camping or whatever, or you're roasting uh, s'mores, be careful that you don't catch your hands on fire with having a uh, hand sanitizer. Now, the other thing we want to think about putting in our first aid kit is any of our uh, pain medications that we think we might need, like a Tylenol or a Motrin. Uh, if we get motion sickness, maybe we need some Dramamine in there. And then if we have allergies, our over-the-counter allergy medicines are, can, can be in there also. The other thing we want to make sure we do with our first aid kit yearly is go through that kit, make sure that our, our expiration dates are, are okay, nothing's out of date. The next big thing that we want to put in our uh, first aid kit is emergency first aid guide. Now, the emergency first aid guide is something that we recommend that everybody read through and be familiar with it before you need it, because if you wait until you need it, sometimes those events are stressful and we get nervous. So most communities offer a CPR class for basic first aid and someone in your group would be very beneficial to be go through that class uh, that's gonna be with you on your trip or your outing. Next thing you need to make sure of is wherever you're going, make sure you know what the emergency services number is. If it's other than 911, we need to put those emergency numbers in the front of our book on the outside cover. We need to put those in our phone we need to make sure where they're at and everybody knows what they are. And then let's make sure we put this in our first aid kit. And then, like I said, we're going to put that in our box. We're going to close it. And we have made our own basic first aid kit. Commercial first aid kits come in all shapes and sizes. But the biggest thing that we need to remember is what fits our family or our group, the size of people, the number of people that we're taking with us. Now, the big important thing we're going to take home from this, if you're hurt, if you're severely hurt or injured, call 911 immediately. Do not wait. Do not wait. Call 911. We would rather have a false alarm than have something bad happen on down the road. So now that you know what goes into a first basic first aid class, let's talk about your vehicle. Hi, my name is Augustus Holland. I'm an Ag and 4-H educator in Tulsa County. I want to talk to you today a little bit about preparing your vehicle for a road trip. So 
we all know that we pack and get ready to go on trips. So we've prepared our clothes and stuff. So have you guys thought about preparing your vehicles? So the first thing I want to visit with you guys about is the things that you're going to want to keep on your person. So I carry a backpack that has a few clothes in it. So that's going to be especially important if you're going to have an overnight trip. You always want to keep a flashlight with you. I also want to double check before your trip to make sure that the batteries are good and maybe carry an extra set, okay? A few other things that you're going to want to keep with you are your first aid kit. It's a good idea to have one bottle of water per person in the vehicle. You're also going to want to keep some granola bars or some crackers in the vehicle. Emergencies can happen at any time, whether it's a weather-related event or whether you have a vehicle breakdown. So some other things that I want to visit with you about are keeping your vehicle prepared and things that you need to bring and keep in your vehicle. So if you have a tire that goes down, but you can still air it up, it's good to keep an air compressor in the vehicle. If you have a tire that's going flat and you absolutely have to change it, then you need to make sure that you have a jack available. So this is one that comes with the vehicle. There are also other forms in a bottle jack, or you have some four jacks that are good options. You also need to make sure that you have a lug wrench that fits the lugs on your vehicle. So here we have a four-way which should fit most vehicles, but you need to double check to make sure that it'll fit those vehicles. Your vehicle should also come with a lug wrench or breakover bar standard with your vehicle. Jumper cables are very important to have with you as well in the case that you have a battery that goes dead or you can't get your vehicle started. These are good tools to keep in your toolbox. A toolkit is another important piece of uh, equipment to have in your toolbox or in your vehicle. In case you have a vehicle breakdown, you have some wrenches or um, some pliers to help mend some brakes and stuff that you may or may not have. A few other good things to keep would be duct tape, cable ties, or some bailing twine or wire. These can help get your vehicle prepared enough to get it off the road or home until you can get it fixed properly. So you guys may have some vehicles that may burn a little bit of oil. It would be important to have a quart of oil in your vehicle as well. I would also recommend for vehicles that use water or antifreeze, um, especially on these hot days that you might have, that you keep a jug antifreeze in your vehicle. All right, so the next important thing is whenever you do have these disasters or your vehicle breakdown, you want to make sure that you're getting your vehicle off the road. So the best thing you can do is get off at the next exit, or if you're in town somewhere, get off on the safe road, um, gas station, whatever you can get to. But if you're on the interstate and don't have that option, just make sure that you're getting off of the curb far enough that you're not going to be impeding traffic, but you're far enough off that you can safely work on your vehicle. So. If you have orange, it's important to have orange cones or reflectors that you can set out behind your vehicle to show that, hey, there's a vehicle up here and pay attention. It would be also important if you have some high visibility here that if you're out working on your vehicle, that you put these on so that people can see you. Some other reflective things that might work if you need to use them. We also have a tarp here that's not necessarily as important to keep in the vehicle, but it helps if you're needing to get on the ground to work on your vehicle or if you need to cover something. Um, these are helpful to have as well. Last thing I want to show you that I normally keep in a vehicle, especially during the winter months are a blanket and or a jacket. So you want to make sure that you're able to stay warm if you get into a situation to where you're broke down on the side of the road or you run into a weather event that you need to stay warm with. So 
now that we're talking about storms or natural events and unexpected weather, those can pop up at any time. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to Marty and he's gonna give you some helpful tips to be prepared for unexpected weather. Thank you, Gus. I'm Marty Montague from the OSU Extension Office in Choctaw and Wishpatal counties in Southeast Oklahoma. I'd like to visit with you just a couple minutes about being a little more weather aware when you're traveling. Um, my friends have talked a little bit about how to prepare your vehicle, how to be prepared, how to be uh, ready for emergencies that might come up on the road. What I want to talk to you and visit with you about is being aware of the weather, both where you're leaving from, where you're going to, but especially while you're on the road. You know, there's a number of apps. In fact, I have one that will follow the weather wherever I go. And that's important to give me a heads up whether the weather turns bad, whether that be icy conditions in the wintertime, or whether that be severe thunderstorms and tornadoes in the spring and summer months. So be, be aware of that, find those apps, um, check out your route and uh, be aware of that. Whenever you are traveling, if you run into a situation that has bad weather, be thinking about where you can, can find shelter be aware of what you've just passed, maybe the towns that you just come through, and find a place of, of shelter and wait to storm out. If it requires you to do so, turn around and go back to the last town that you did come through and wait to storm out there. One more thing, when you get to your final destination, whether it be your hotel or your cabin, look for the storm shelter. If it's not clearly marked, ask the clerk when you check in. Also, if you are traveling during severe thunderstorms and that sort of thing, let's don't drive through water that's covered the roadway. Number one, we don't know for sure how deep the water is. We can't see through it. And number two, we're not sure the roadway is even there. It may have already washed out. So we don't want to drive through water that we can't see through. Uh, and also, we never, never drive across down power lines. If there are power lines down, assume that they are hot and let's don't do that. There's a number of other things to be a little bit more aware of, um, and, and you can find that stuff with the American Red Cross. You can also find another list of that stuff with your um, OSU Extension offices and their disaster management uh, website. Be in touch with us and let us help you become more weather aware. All right. So having seen that, kind of looking here, it looks like a lot of you are, are thinking more about either starting to drive or maybe you're already driving and just thinking about kind of how to get ready for the road. Do you guys have any follow-up questions for Tommy or I about any of that? One thing I might add on the on the vehicle, because I was looking at the chat and some of you said you just got a car, you're getting a car and you're thinking about driving. Maybe you're getting ready to go to a summer camp or something. Even though you have all those things in your vehicle and you're prepared, one more thing that would be good for you to do prior to it is practice changing a flat tire. Because if it's raining or you're along the interstate or wherever and you're nervous and you're stressed already, trying to figure out how to change a tire for the first time is pretty important and it, you're gonna be more nerve wracked. Newer cars, uh, uh, Gus was talking about a four-way wrench and that's great. But some of the newer vehicles have to have a certain uh, metric size. So we wanna make sure we have that in our car. Sometimes it's, it's the only wrench that fits is under your hood or in the back seat under a, a, a storage compartment. So same way with getting some of these newer vehicles have the, the spare tire under the vehicle. And the only way you can get that spare tire out is with those tools that are in your vehicle somewhere that you, you insert the rod into a keyhole in the back of the vehicle and you have to let the the spare tire down. So if you've never changed that, you need to have another adult or someone show you how to change a tire, how on your specific vehicle. Uh, another thing I want to tell you about is, you know, when you guys are driving, you know, my kids are grown, but my grandkids are getting ready to drive. And I worry so much about your safety on the road. And I am sure that every one of you have a cell phone. 
but we just we just heard about not very long ago a guy ran out of gas and two fellows picked him up they go get him gas they fill his car up and he shoots them both so you know if you're ever worried about where you're at you need to be letting people know hey i'm broke down i've got a flat i ran out of gas you need to let somebody know immediately what's what's going on with you so they're not worried about you just another tidbit about changing tires we just uh, do it ahead of time figure out how to do it before you need it that's all great i just got a brand new vehicle well new to me and I had to figure out where the jack was and where that wrench was. You kind of have to crawl all over it to try to figure out where that stuff is on your vehicle. <laughs> all right, so here guys, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna make you interact with us a little bit here. We're gonna play a little what if, a little game of what if here. So what if you and your friends are headed to a concert this fall. It's gonna be at night. You're gonna be driving back late. What of the things that you heard in the video do you think are most important to take into consideration as you and your friends drive to that concert and then drive home? I will let the silence get awkward. I think having all the stuff in your car, I think that's like one of the most important things, like just being prepared for anything that can happen. Yeah, especially that flashlight and batteries. You're going to be driving at night, you know, having that flashlight and batteries so you can see what you're doing. The last thing you want to do is run down your phone, trying to use the flashlight on your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, to change a tire. <laughs> you know, if you guys are planning on going somewhere, uh, Marty talked about weather apps, but there's also driving apps that uh, if you're on the interstate, there might be a wreck ahead of you and you might have an app, you can get an app, app on your road, on your phone that tells you how to take a different exit to go around that instead of sitting on the interstate for three hours, waiting to go around it there's there's driving apps that can keep you safe that way also yeah and by the same token just thinking about your route ahead of time thinking about where you would pull off if you had to um you know what towns are you going to be going through i was coming back late at night from an event kind of on the other side of the state and i'll tell you i didn't do that and I had to go a long way to find a gas station. So think about those things. Think about how much gas you've got, how far you're going to have to go before you get to another gas station. Uh, because that, especially right now, gas stations aren't all open 24 hours necessarily. So think about that part of your route as well. Where are you going to stop if you need to? Hi, Amy. This is Gus. Hey, Gus. I hey. apologize. Okay, you're doing other events today. So we have uh, watched the video, and now we are just doing kind of what-if analysis. We just said a what-if. You're headed to a concert with your friends this fall, driving back late at night. What are those elements of that video that are most critical? We had talked about making sure you have the things in your car in case you have a breakdown. Along the way, we had talked about having that driving app and weather app on your phone so you know what to do if you get detoured, um, and then maybe paying attention to the towns and the gas stations along your route as well. Okay, perfect. So let's see, let's do another what if. Do you do uh, any of you guys show animals? Do you have any showmen on the? You go to Tulsa State Fair? I do. All right. So you're headed to Tulsa State Fair. You've got a ways to go. You've got livestock. Weather is unpredictable. 
at Tulsa State Fair time. You can be sweating on day one and freeze day three. So what do you think? What's the critical stuff you gotta think about? Maybe that first aid kit might be pretty important. Thinking about the things you need to have in your first aid kit for the show. How about you? I always had a rope burn. My heifer was never particularly cooperative by the time we got there and I always ended up with a rope burn. I don't know, but it was always my luck that uh, we needed a jack and a four-way with those trailer tires. Changing the tire on a trailer that has livestock in it. That's a whole other, <laughs> a whole other challenge. Most definitely. All right, well, let's, let's think about another what if. Um, let's say you're going on a hike with your friends. You're kind of gonna go out maybe up to uh, the tall grass prairie area, go on about a three mile hike. What are you thinking about then? Food, water, and a map. A map, yeah, because do you have, can you get a trail map before you start? Because your phone may not work when you get out there. Another thing that you want to think about on those type of trips is uh, if you're going to go out and as Amy said, uh, phones might not work. It might be a good idea to let somebody know where you're at, what time you leave and what time you think you're going to be back. That way, if you don't show back up for hours and hours, you know, they can say, oh, well, this was their last known location. So just keep people informed. Yeah, bug repellent. Caden, that's a good one because, um, and, and then having your bug bite cream otherwise too. Another thing to think about, you know, if we're talking about summertime and you've got anything that's kind of in an aerosol can like a bug repellent, um, you know, be careful about that with the high temperatures in your vehicle. I know that I have had a hand sanitizer bottle actually expand and then explode in my vehicle. So uh, you gotta think about those high temperatures and the things you're putting in your first aid kit as well, being able to stand up to the high temperatures of your vehicle. I'd always recommend not going by yourself as well. Buddy system. It's a lot of fun with other people too. Yeah, that's why we like our disaster team. We've that's got a lot of good. That's right. <laughs> what are some other hobbies you guys have? Give me another, uh, or Rose, you were going to say something. Go ahead. I was going to say it would be important to check the weather before you go. Absolutely. Yeah, if a severe storm brews up and you're having lightning in that area, that can be very dangerous to be out on a trail um, during a storm that has thunder and lightning, not to mention flash flooding, uh, kind of the, the dangers of that. If you're out on a trail, it can cut you off from uh, another part of the trail. So be thinking about that. Think about where the high points in the trail are as well too. Our cell phones we talked about might not have service everywhere. And I know a lot of cell phones have GPS, but if you guys are not just hiking, but if you're going on a uh, mountain bike trail or if you're going on a horse trail, might be something you want to think about to get familiar with an actual GPS unit. That way you know how to lay your tracks and then you can reverse your tracks back out. So, G, you know, just getting more familiar with some technology uh, would be good to have. Geocaching is a really fun way to get familiar with that technology. What else do you guys like to do for fun that you'd need to 
think about some of these issues for what if announced, I mean, what if this is, this is exactly how you prepare for unexpected things. You just go through the what ifs in your head, not in a negative way, but just, okay, am I, do I have everything I need? What if this happens? Do I have everything I need? Amy, we might run through some uh, scenarios like going to the lake or the creek because that's a pretty popular summertime activity for a lot of a lot of families. Absolutely. So, what if we're going out to the lake, going out with some friends? Somebody's got a boat, maybe. We need to think about. Make sure well, one you have a life jacket mm -hmm. that fits. Yes. I, I touched on it a little bit on the, the first aid part, but how many of you have ever really thought about your hand sanitizer? And the, what's, the, what's the two dirtiest utensils in a camp setting? Out of everything you take with you on a camping trip, whether it's to the lake for the weekend or for a five day camp out or just to go eat burgers out by the, the pond with some friends. What's the two dirtiest utensils you take with you? Anybody got an idea? Your right hand and your left hand. That's the two dirtiest utensils you'll get. Everything else you always wash it and clean it up before you go, but we don't wash our hands. And a lot of times we think, oh, let's just slap on some hand sanitizer and we're good. That's all fine and dandy. But remember, our hand sanitizer is a gel. It gets in our pores. And then we just keep doing it. Oh, I want to eat a marshmallow. So I'm going to put hand sanitizer. I'm going to eat my hot dog. I'll put hand sanitizer. Pretty soon you've got layers and layers of hand sanitizer. It is all alcohol based. And if you catch your hands on fire, they won't go out until all the hand sanitizer is burned out of your pores. So remember, if you know the best way to extinguish a fire is to cut the oxygen out of it. You know, get those get those hands in water. You know, need be get them under dirt, something to get that oxygen away from that fire. You really be careful with hand sanitizer with an open flame out on a picnic or camping out. Always afraid I'm going to get a fish hook caught in my hand. Man, or a splinter. You guys know how to remove a splinter properly from your hand? Something, something to think about, something to remember. That sunscreen becomes pretty important to have. Um, it, with water, that sun reflecting off of the water, it's really easy to get burned and you don't even realize it. Next thing you know, you've got a pretty severe sunburn out of the lake. Again, bites, thinking about bites, identifying like poison oak, poison ivy, making sure you don't get into that. All good things to think about. During the winter, whenever we have snows or just even cold weather in general, it's always a good good thing to keep blankets um jackets especially if we have snow you might want to think about keeping some salt like bag salt in your truck or your car in case you get into a situation where you need to melt snow to get out um jumper cables i'm sure you guys watched earlier are going to be very important um vehicles that are are light in the rear end you might want to add weight to the back of them whenever we have bad weather for like snow. Um, that'll help a little bit with traction, especially like two wheel drive half ton trucks. You know, that's something you might want to keep in mind as well. That's actually a good point. Whether you have a front wheel drive, an all wheel drive, a rear wheel drive. You guys know what kind of vehicle you have and what that's going to mean for your traction. Even, even if you're on a wet road, um, those things matter for your traction and the likelihood that you'll potentially hydroplane uh, as you're driving down the road during wet conditions. 
And speaking of wet conditions, it's always important to keep an eye on the tread of your vehicle. Because if you get in wet conditions and you have bald tires, that, that's a recipe for disaster in itself. Oh, I was hoping I had a penny. We could talk about the penny test for your tread. Can you see Abraham Lincoln's head? Probably should have been something we did on our video. Let's think yeah. of that. So I did bring just a couple of like, you can just get these at Walmart in the travel section. This is a little first aid kit that you can get in the travel section of Walmart. It has some of those things that Tommy talked about. It has the hand sanitizing wipes. It has the band-aids in a variety of sizes. Um, it has just the all purpose sterile gauze pads. Not much in here, but if you wanted something to just throw in your backpack, to get in somebody else's vehicle, something like that might be really nice. This is, oops, sorry, this is what they look like. They're in the travel section. Um, another thing is you're thinking about band-aids and things to take to camps or to throw something in um, your backpack. You might think about the ones that have the antibiotic already on them uh, as something that you then, you kind of reduce the stuff that you're carrying around with you, possibly. The other thing I was gonna say is that, you know, sometimes if you've got just a, you want something to just throw in the console of your vehicle, there are some really small kits that actually, they're, they're fine for one person um, and they're something you can just throw in your console, but they have all of the elements that Tommy talked about as well. The other thing I was gonna say is think about as the weather changes, what kind of changes do you need to do in terms of preparation for your vehicle? Right now it's summertime, it's hot. We're thinking about, do we need to have some water or some antifreeze um, or, or some, I'm sorry, some coolant <laughs> in the vehicle? Um, we're thinking about kind of hot weather type of scenarios. But as we get into the fall, think about having that blanket in your vehicle. Because if something happens and you have to wait on someone to come and get you on the side of the road, having that blanket or a heavy jacket in your vehicle, um, you know, maybe even some of those hand warmers, like those, those um, hand warmers that you just shake up to keep in your pockets. And these are things you can use for, for other things too. I mean, they're not just in there or in case an emergency happens, but, but do think about those kinds of things as the weather changes as well. And as we get into severe weather, um, different kinds of severe weather, pay attention to those conditions. And if you need to pull off to the side of the road, pull off to the side of the road. You know, if you're getting into some icy conditions, you're getting nervous, you're not sure you'll be able to drive on those roads, find a safe place and pull off. Um, and, and you know, maybe you need to turn around and get back on a different road, maybe a road that's been more heavily traveled, uh, something like that, get back to a gas station. But if you start feeling unsafe on a road, uh, just don't, don't keep going down that road. So. You guys have been so quiet. Any questions? You can put them in the chat. I won't make you talk. All right, Caden, give us a question. Come on, Bob. Called out. I am. He ought to know me well enough by now. All right, so here, let's do this. What's the one thing 
you're going to put in your vehicle or make sure is in your family's vehicle after this session. What, what's your what's your takeaway? What are you going to make sure is in there that you don't think is in there now? You can put it in the chat. I'm okay with that. You never had to use the stuff you packed in your vehicle for an emergency. So I have had to use the first aid kit. Um, that is something that I've used regularly out of my vehicle. Um, for little things, sometimes it's just, you know, even if you're going to an event that's in Oklahoma City or Tulsa, just walking around and you give yourself a blister. I mean, there's just nothing more miserable than walking around with a blister without being able to put anything on it. Bug bites, I'll tell you, I have three kids and um, being prepared for one of those three kids to get sick is real. So uh, the first aid kit is the most important thing. That, and I have helped other people as well. I don't know how many times people have come to me and been like, well, I know you have a first aid kit. So, you know, do you have this or that or whatever? You'll find yourself being the person that people come to because they, they know you actually have stuff. You'll find out the older you get, you'll use everything that we talked about today, whether it's jumper cables or the bug screen or the, the vet wrap. Man, that's a, one of the coolest things ever invented was vet wrap because you can use that on your vehicle and your, and your body, you know? So uh, I remember one time when my daughter was 10 years old, we was going to Tulsa State Fair to the state 4-H horse show. And uh, it's dark, it's raining. We blow out a tire along the interstate and I got her standing on the fender with a flashlight holding it along the interstate. Man, I was a nervous wreck, you know, but there wasn't any place else to go. And I couldn't hold the flashlight. And since then, I've got a flashlight that's self-standing to where I can set it on the ground and it puts out a bigger beam of light. That way I can, I don't have to put anybody else in harm's way besides myself, so. Jumper cables. I've used my jumper cables in an emergency. I have an extra long set of jumper cables because you don't really think about the fact that you have to actually be able to get nose to nose with another vehicle and big trucks, for example, matched to little car, you kind of got to have some longer jumper cables. So I invested in some uh, longer corded jumper cables after that. Not recommended, but I saw a guy get stuck in the side of the road one time and uh, another fellow stopped to pull him out and they had two sets of jumper cables tied together trying to pull themselves out. So really not recommended. They're awful expensive tool to, to tear up that way, but. Maybe rope. Maybe we need to add rope to the list. <laughs> chain, something. <laughs> yeah, I've got a logging chain in the bed of my truck and I've also got a... Uh, I guess it's a nylon mixture toe strap as well. So, I mean, you know, those are always important things to think about, especially if you break down and need someone to pull you just half a mile or so up the road to a gas station. You know, it might be handy to, to have something that can get you pulled out of harm's way. Guess you got your question. Are there any accessories I could bring that would make changing a tire on the side of the road easier? Boy, do I have an answer for that breakover bar. What is a breakover bar, guys? Uh, it's a longer piece of metal. So my breakover bar that I have is almost two foot long, but it hooks directly into the deep, deep lug sockets that I have. So I keep basically impact sockets i keep them in my truck and a long breakover bar because most of the places you take your vehicles now are going to use an air tool and get those uh, lug nuts so tight that even with a four-way 
you have a hard time getting them off, especially with three quarter ton and one ton trucks, or even if you're working on a livestock trailer, you got to have a little extra pressure. Um, you know, sometimes a piece of pipe, you can slide over the end of one section of a four way and, and use that as what I would call a cheater bar to give yourself more leverage. But that's one of the important things. And then I don't particularly like the jacks that the vehicles come with because normally they don't do a very good job for the situations I get into. So I like to keep a floor jack with me to lift my trucks and trailers up. Gus had talked about that earlier, having a bottle jack and things. And, and the one that comes with your vehicle is for an emergency use. They don't expect you to use it day in, day out. But what you get into is that tire goes flat in a sandy area or a muddy area. And those little low jacks they, they send with the vehicles just aren't as stable. And the bottle jack that Gus talked about is a little more stable. But you know, he just talked about some type of floor jack or scissor jack. And they're just a lot more stable in all those different situations, make you feel a lot more comfortable changing that tire. Yeah, and what I like about them is they're, like you said, they have more stability because they're obviously longer. But if you look at a typical bottle jack, most of the time they don't have a swivel head to them and they're, they don't have the cup that those floor jacks do. And to me, once you you start raising them you you lose your stability and you don't want your vehicle rocking so if you're on uneven ground i don't i don't like bottle jacks for that particular reason so i think another accessory for changing a tire is actually that tarp um, the last thing you want is to get glass or rocks digging into like cutting into your elbows or your back or something while you're trying to get under there. Um, you know, also I think muddy because sometimes you're kind of off on the side and the weeds and the mud and you're trying to kick down the weeds <laughs> to, uh, to get where you need to be. And that tarp can actually help you kind of create a workspace that you can be in where you can have you know, everything you need on that tarp and you're not digging around in the weeds trying to find, you know, the what you dropped or anything like that. So actually, I think that tarp is, that was something I took away from this. I don't have a tarp in my vehicle right now. I think I'm going to go find myself a nice, tightly folded up tarp and put that in my vehicle. Tommy had a very good suggestion and, that, and I've got something similar, but Normally, whenever something happens to me, it's never at a convenient time, and it's usually at dark where it's raining. But having a flashlight that's either on a tripod that you can mount towards the light, or I've got one, one of my 4-H leaders whenever I was back in Delaware County, got me a snap-on light that is magnetized, so I can just magnetize it to the fender of a trailer or something. And so... And it'll also fold up and have like a little light bar. So, you know, having, having a light that you can use by yourself is very important in my opinion. Sounds like a good Christmas present for somebody. Uh, you know there's somebody in your life who needs that for a Christmas present. Does anybody out there uh, deal with horses? Well, what we usually use when we're camping with horses is we use headlamps. And it's, I don't know if anybody's familiar with those, but it's just a headlight that goes on your hat or your, or your forehead if you're not wearing a cap. And if you're wanting to use one of those to, if you're a mountain biker or something like that, they don't take up much room. And if you're wanting to change your tire, wherever you look, the light goes where you go and they don't take up much room. So, Another thing to have that's that's when you're camping or you're hiking is another good good tool to have is a some type of headlamp. You don't you can free up your hands. All right, I'm gonna go last call. Last call for questions. 
this is, this is your moment to ask your burning question. Like what is a breakover bar? Safety tidbit, it's always better to push away with that breakover bar than to pull towards you. In case something else breaks, you won't whack yourself in the chin or the mouth. Now, please don't compound your flat tire with a broken nose. Yeah, there are some of us that may have experienced that, and that's why you're getting to hear about it. Learning from experience. It's what we're about. Yeah, it's kind of like those uh, inline bail dump trailers. Whenever you lift up on them, you want to get out of the way of the bar. They tend to catch your chin if you're not careful. All right, so everybody's going to go find their tire. They're going to find their jack and the wrench that matches it. They're going to check their first aid kit for their vehicle. They're going to download a weather app to their phone. I hope. All right, I got a thumbs up. All right, well, if there are no other burning questions, Gus, Tommy, any last thoughts for our group as they go get ready to hit the road? Don't be so paranoid about not having fun while you're there. Still got to have fun, that's what it's all about. And we do these things and we hope we never have to use them. All right, well, thank you all for attending. Um, we hope that this has been informative and useful to you. We hope you got something out of it that you could take away, especially for those of you that are uh, going to be driving soon or are new drivers thinking about those things as you start looking at your vehicle um, and thinking about those longer trips with your friends and those vehicles and, you know, have a lot of fun with it. Uh, being prepared makes it easier to have fun because then you don't have to worry about some of those things in the background. All right, everyone, I am going to uh, go ahead and start kicking us all back to the main room. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.